Fantasy Heart Podcast with your hosts, Vish. They're just bastardizing our childhood and the classics. Chris. Nintendo dogs drove me. It's what makes me want to hurt people. Radical. People in general still bitch about everything. Yeah. It still doesn't change. Let the podcast begin. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the VCR podcast, the only podcast that predates itself from the moment the title was spoken. Adam, aka CS Radical, here with you guys. Jin and Chris, Views Vichelle's here with me. How is everyone doing on this wonderful Mario Day today? Fantastic. Do, 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 do. And copyright strikes good. have already been done by Nintendo. Thanks, Vichelle. Our channel is hereby revoked for the 19th time this year. <laughs> I wonder uh, if there's a record for how many times one person has had a channel revoked. And uh, I really hope I get that record. I'm sure... I, I can honestly make a good guess that it's either music-based or it's Matthew from Botchamania because he has like a million different YouTube channels he's done putting up WWE parody clips. Hmm. But I'm probably willing to bet it's, it's music-related because Lord knows the music industry is so okay with people using their stuff. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah, they yeah. are. They really, really are. They love it. Like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you would never hear someone you would never hear Kanye West being mad about someone using one of his songs. No, no, no. No. He wouldn't do no. that. The industry wouldn't do that. No. <laughs> Not a bunch of like conceited asshole billionaire. No. Well, well, he uh, will he be a billionaire after the divorce? Oh no, I'm though? talking rec- record industry execs. Oh, okay, okay, uh, those fucktards. Yeah. Hmm. Hell yeah. Speaking of fucktards, hey guys, it's the VCR podcast. How's it going? <laughs> Stop y'all. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we, is... we the fucktards are the people listening. Good question. Oh, let's. That's an excellent question, Chris. So uh, <laughs> okay, uh, well, let's do this thing called an let's, intro. Let's not. Let's not insult our audience. I, I, lo- I love giving the typical the uh, the politi- the political dodge whenever you ask a really good question and you don't want to answer it because they actually got the answer completely right. Where it's like oh, that's an excellent question. You know, this reminds me of that one time that I was watching the boys. And by the way, <laughs> <laughs> and all uh, uh, they four. started they started filming season no three. They started filming season God three damn in it. Toronto I, I did right this now. to myself. And that's apparently, it's it's going all hell is going to break loose that season. I mean, I would assume so. You know, you kind of want to up the ante every season. It's not like a show does really well when it's like, hey, here's this new season, guys. You ready? Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> uh, Unless you're Game well, of Thrones. There's been shows like that. Actually, that's well, a lie. Is, things happen uh, in Game of Thrones, just nothing yeah. anybody liked. Well, yeah, thing is, with Game yeah. of Thrones, what happened is every it was incredible. From Okay, so I, I stopped watching Game of Thrones after season three. But from I, I know everything that happens in it, but I, Game of yeah. Thrones, um, I heard it was incredible until the final season. The after the uh, the final season, I heard it, the final season. It, everyone says it, it was like a literal dick punch. It was that bad. I'm not gonna lie. I took a little bit of happiness in watching everybody's pain over the last season of that show because they wouldn't shut the hell up about it to me. Every freaking conversation they had, I'm like, I'm so glad you guys are miserable now because now you don't so want to talk about it, and that makes me happy. I just felt that pain. So Adam I had only felt is that pain. a sociopath. I'm not a sociopath. I'm just an asshole. <laughs> Fair enough. But you're your asshole. There is a difference. I know it's not. I'm not my asshole. I'm your asshole. I you don't say your. You know what I meant. No. What do you mean, <laughs> you people? All right. Whoa. I'm getting off of this stupid fucking train <laughs> derailment mean, before it's way too fucking late. So yeah, VCR podcast. Um, news wise, there's not gonna be a lot to talk about. We are gonna obviously go over, you know, it not being you know a, a special day for in the gaming and you know community at all. It's not like it's a a date that people have used in infamy over a certain really popular franchise. No, that hasn't a thing. And and it's not like a couple of days ago was a really important day for uh, for female gamers either. No, that that wasn't a thing. Adam, I'm sure there. We'll, we'll figure out something to talk about. Okay. Adam, we'll figure all out I, something. All we'll just I check the calendar real quick. All I want to say about this is, may the force be with you. How many nerds did I piss off just okay. now? Okay. 
I, I got I got two things to say. One, fuck off. And two, that has no, nothing to even do with any of the things that I brought up. So you're just okay, never mind. I'm not the asshole. You're the fucking asshole. So uh, intros, highlights of intros. the week. So uh I'm gonna take a risk here. And I'm gonna start <laughs> with me. Oh, oh, that is a risk. Cause I got two things to say. Okay, how far, are you, if, I, if I may ask, how far are you now in Ghost of Tsushima? You see, that's an excellent question. Because I'm about to piss I some people off. I feel like you off. haven't played it at all. I'm not dro- I've dropped it. <laughs> what? Oh. It's been two weeks since I last played it, and I have zero interest in picking it back up. Uh, you haven't I knew you had a play story at all or was... anything? I tried to, and then I just, I finally got to that point where I said, you know what? I have at least five other games that I really want to play at some point. Outriders is coming on April the 1st. Mass Effect um, Legendary Edition is in May. And I'm looking forward at all these other games I still want to play. Not to mention, I'm thinking about starting to stream soon. And I'm like, do I really want to start streaming with a game that I honestly am struggling to want to play? And the more I thought about it, the more that I went, you know what? I don't hate Ghost of Tsushima, but it's not really giving me much to want to continue. The story uh, is not horrible, but it's not what I want because okay, I'm not uh, really. Like, will you let me finish before you you I'm play sorry. twenty questions with me? Um, <laughs> I honestly <laughs> don't hate the game, and I know a lot of people are going to hear, "Oh, I'm dropping the game." Is oh, he thinks this game fucking sucks? No, it's not the case at all. The problem is twofold. One, it's an open world game, and I think I'm open worlded out. I don't think I can play those kind of games unless there's something really hooking me in. And because Ghost of Tsushima's only hook is Japan, and it's not even really, like, my kind of Japan. I mean, if you had some crazy anime bullshit open world game, I'd probably get around to it. But then again, Genshin Impact was garbage, so. The honestly, like, Ghost of Tsushima has fantastic gameplay. I will never take that away from it, and it's gorgeous. But the story, at least from how much I played, is really not connecting. The side missions are unbelievably repetitive. And quite frankly, the story missions are mostly really poorly structured. For example, uh, for example, okay, there is a mission just... where you'll literally go to one place, fight one person along the way, and then find out, oh, you actually need to go back to this place. And then you'll go towards that place, and you'll have to fight at some point. And then it'll say, oh, by the way, now you're done. Go, go, get, go collect your quest, and you'll go back there. That's not an interesting mission. No interesting dialogue happens. No interesting plot points really happen, except for maybe like a couple of missions. But even then, they're so minor that it doesn't mean anything. And so much more of that time is spent on a horse doing nothing. There is so much dead time in that game. And I've played Assassin's Creed Odyssey, even Odyssey, the game that has you spending five minutes tailing a guy around a fucking town did not have as nearly as much dead time. And that's saying something. Okay, uh, if I may ask, I'm trying to be as vague as possible. Did you get to a point in no. Ghost of Tsushima where I can already answer that question, no, because I barely did any more stories since I, since I did the castle. So whatever okay, scene you were um, telling me about, I never encountered it. I never made it that far. Okay, because I, I can tell you in my experience of this game, when that scene happens, the game completely changes. To which I will say, I don't care. It's been 20 hours. Fair and enough. And I, I know I played the open world, but realistically, that's still five hours probably of story that I played and felt nothing. Because that the same thing happened with, say, like, and Chris can attest to this, Final Fantasy XIII. How many people said that that game gets amazing after about 15 hours? That's not a selling point. <laughs> yeah. I get that. I, I, like, oh, sorry, it may have been ahead, longer please. than 15. Either, either way, uh, like, just, and I'm, we're not talking gameplay. We're talking story. When the story gets good after X amount of hours, that's never good. The story should be good as soon as you start it. And when I played the game, I went, okay, this is beautiful. At no point did I go, wow, I really like the main character. Oh, wow, I really like this person. Oh, wow, this is a really interesting story. It's just, this is gorgeous. Oh, I'm a samurai trying to avenge fallen samurai. Woo. I get that. I, I, like, again, I'm going by my experience of the game because I did finish it and finish the story. And, like I said, there's this one moment that I felt the game completely changed. 
So, but it sounds like it's halfway into the game, which is no, that, it shouldn't take that not, long. I don't think you're far off from it. I mean, either way, it doesn't change the fact that I went through an entire arc of the game without feeling a fucking thing about it. Aside okay. from, wow, this is cute, and oh my god, can I pet more foxes? Oh, and oh, yeah, oh my god, Jin's got a nice ass. Those were the three things that I came up with. Yeah, you 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 went to the hot springs. Of course I. I've literally cleared the entire map. Of course I did. In, in fact, so I went only, several times only, uh, and back for extra just for my own self-satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> my only biggest problem with the game was the uh, haiku missions. I thought those were really fucking lame. It's, it's almost like open world games have filler. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty I, yeah, It's no. just like... Yeah, I get that. Um, it's, it I, sucks, because like, your... I, I don't want to hate the game. Well, I don't hate the game. That's a lie. I don't hate it. I just, I really wanted to love it. And I think it also has to do with just, it got so overblown in terms of its hype after um, everybody wanted it to beat The Last of Us at the Game Awards. So everybody propped it up as like this game of the year, like game changer kind of game. So by the time that I played it, I went, oh, it's a pretty standard open world game that just has a better design to it. Like, visually, it's the best open world game I think I've ever played, but it just plays like every other open world game after that point, so. Hmm. See, uh, th that was the thing with The Last of Us 2. Like, they, um, they went from 0 to 100 in the first two hours. Like, literally in the first two hours. That, like, I was just like, what the fuck just happened? Well, I mean, great example. You know how a story gets you right away without even without even actual story, like in terms of like written like pathing of like characters and stuff. The moment you play Final Fantasy VII, you're already in because that intro is so fucking cool and gets your attention. Ghost of Tsushima is just like every standard action game where it's just here's a big battle. You fight a bunch of people. People die in front of you. You kill some people and then you get stabbed and you're like, oh, great. Like, it's every fucking fighting game, or, like, every um, action, like, adventure game you've ever played. It just doesn't do anything to hook you right off the bat. So, <laughs> it's like I said, like, um, Adam, I don't, I don't know, maybe you and I have completely different taste in I mean, I, I think that's so. <laughs> I think that's pretty yeah. true. Not to mention, I'm the this anime bullshit guy. You bet your sweet ass I got some fucking different tastes than you. <laughs> no, I get that. Uh, all I'm saying is, like, with the, um, with Ghost of Tsushima, um, I, like there's sometimes that like the side missions i just was like fuck this shit I, i'm not even gonna bother especially with the haiku ones but when it got to like a certain point i'm like i'm just gonna continue the story continue the story the story did get me hooked and you're you're not at that point where i felt the game completely changes story-wise and gameplay wise so again it's entirely up to you he says as on. he keeps telling me, well, if you just went a little bit further. <laughs> no, there, there's this one part in the game where like, I you, felt don't, like... You don't need to tell... You've said it changed. three times already. I know. I heard it. I get that, man. I'm just I'm just saying. It's like, I think in the... I think the end game of it, I think you would actually enjoy everything that happened in... Well, it's too end. bad on Sucker Punch's part that they didn't get me in the first 10. Okay. So the other thing but I want to also... talk about is for my sure. own self-satisfaction as well, is um, I watched the last All Elite Wrestling pay-per-view and was probably one of the most memorable shows I think I've ever watched in wrestling history, both for good and for bad reasons at the same time, which was uh, quite interesting in the end. So I, I, got, I got to tell you, the show is amazing. Like When I really do sit down and think about it, the show is fantastic. Every match on the card was really good. Lots of cool moments, lots of cool spots. And the best thing of all, and I've told you guys that I have a friend of mine that, that I went to college with who wrestled and got into independent shows and stuff. He fucking debuted on that show on Sunday. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Do you that's have fucking a crazy. Uh, without like take, taking a direct feed from All Elite Wrestling and I don't want to get taken offline, uh, no, I don't. But uh, uh, Ethan Page debuted in the six-man ladder match, and I got really fortunate that... I was watching with a couple of friends over over Discord and screen sharing, and I remembered, oh shit, my girlfriend wanted to see if he was going to show up too. So I quickly got her in as some of the other entrances were being made, being like, hey, get in here, get in here just in case. I had a, I didn't think he was going to be on because the odds of it, because there's so many people that could have been in that spot, right? But I'm like, ah, you know what? Oh, yeah. You know, he's not doing anything right now, and he's he's friends with one of the guys that's pretty big in the company. So you know what? You never know. And then sure enough, his logo pops up and we flipped. And I had that moment of like, oh my God, 
Like I actually know somebody that that made it somewhere, which is that's amazing. Which is both a blessing and a curse at the same time because while it's really cool to see that, you're also sitting there being like, "Why isn't me doing that? <laughs> why is it got? Uh, why can't I do that shit? Why am I sitting here on this podcast uh, that two uh, people uh, watch?" Adam, it's because you're not on steroids and you weigh less than two hundred and twenty. I had pounds. didn't say wrestling. I just mean in general. Unless you need to take steroids <laughs> to be good at Twitch streaming. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you need it for your fucking hand. I don't, I don't got a fucking idea. No, I'm sure there's I mean, the odd person. Like, why you're not there and he is. That's why. Well, on that show, yeah, that's because I'm 145 pounds soaking wet. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> uh, the, but the other thing that was uh, really amazing in a bad perspective, and anybody watching the video version of this, whether on YouTube or Twitch, can see bits of it. There was a barbed wire, or sorry, exploding barbed wire death match on the show. Oh fuck! What? And um, the fuck. <laughs> so, so well, I mean, basically they strap some like um, I guess stunt explosives to next to the ring. So, so when they explode, like you can see oh, there in the slow mo, they explode before oh, the guys get there. It's triggered, so it doesn't yeah, do it's anything. Not real. And the barbed wire is mostly gimmick. So really so it's 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 not good. actually as dangerous as it looks. But yeah. the way the story went was the best part. Is in that when. The match was over. The guy who is going to lose, he's supposed to, I'm assuming he's supposed to get written off TV for a bit. So ideally, they were trying to kill him off because at the end of the, at the end of the match, if it's been 30 minutes, the whole ring will explode. So at the, the end of the match, they go and put the, uh, the countdown on and be like, oh, by the way, everything's about to explode now. And one of the guys, like, old friends who he'd been fighting over and over with, who was a bad guy for a while, I guess was trying to redeem himself by saving it, doing the old, like, cover a guy, or, like, instead of, instead of covering a grenade and taking the fall for a guy, he mm. friggin' covers the guy to try to shield him from the bomb. And um, something bad happened. The pyro didn't go off properly. So the ring post had some sparklers, and then pyro from the outside of the ring went off, and that was it. Something failed miserably, and they had to sell it like like they actually got blown up. So here's these guys lying in the ring for minutes over sparklers, basically. <laughs> I felt so bad for these guys. Um, it's probably one of the worst the finishes and- in wrestling history, and that it was probably is- on one of the coolest shows I've seen in quite some time, which is such we, a fucking okay. shame. Um, nothing is going to top the, um, the death of Owen Hart. Well, that did, that wasn't a finish. That second. that was just a random thing. That wasn't a finish. I don't yeah, think they play on that one. And it shouldn't have been. Yeah. <laughs> although, although if you hear the stories, which I don't want to get into, but if you hear the stories about how horribly uh, put together the harness was that Owen Hart came on that he fell off of, uh, it almost seems like it could have been planned because that amount of incompetence seemed impossible for some for you know a million, a, a multi million at that time corporation. But in you know, but I don't yeah. I don't want to get too deep into that, but. The show was fucking amazing, and yeah. I hope, and anybody, if you, even if you don't care about wrestling, just go and find the clip of what happened at the end of that fucking barbed wire match, and you'll laugh. Like, you'll fucking laugh. And the amount of people that have, like, like superimposed, like, wet fart sound effects over it, it's like, it's, it's been, <laughs> people have had so much fun parodying that. Adam. Yeah. Adam. They're called sharts. If only they could have actually just like it wasn't like a big one, like a big show and they had the ability to just like because sometimes in a movie or something, somebody will trip or they'll say the wrong line, but they just go with it because it actually kind of works like here that happens and they could have been like, oh, phew. OK, never mind. You're my they bro for saving of me, did. but it was the guy oh, okay. still sold the explosion. But like afterwards, they changed the story around to, oh, this guy, the guy that won, he made, because he's the one that supposedly with friends, bu- excuse me, <clears throat> with friends built the ring. So they said, oh, he may be the toughest son of, a, he may be a real tough son of a bitch, but he can't build a bomb worth a shit. So now the story has changed to that, like, oh, he built a dud to finish off this guy. So they're, they're doing the yeah, best yeah. they can, but they still got to explain yeah. why the guy who shielded his best friend like basically passed out for five minutes over sparklers. So I guess they'll have to go with something like, oh, he fainted over like the over like the overload in his brain for potentially dying, I guess. Like they'll have to do something like that. But 
they they are at least trying the best they can to salvage it because there's no because anything they do it's it was a live thing you can't you can't cg your way out of that one you can't snyder yeah. cut that match <laughs> i now want to see the snyder cut <laughs> no for, <laughs> no it, it was an exploding barbed wire death match chris we need the michael bay cut oh uh, true Oh, for fuck's like sake. Like just a Why car driving into a gas station and exploding. That's it. So uh, speaking of gross disappointments, start with Michael Bay. Hey, Vish, uh, I assume you probably have nothing to play with, so I imagine there's a certain game trailer you'd probably <laughs> rather talk about instead, eh? Oh, my God. That, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, okay, you, you're acting like I'm the only one excited about that game. I didn't say that. I just said Oh, I lost my shit. Like, oh, when I but saw you are definitely it, the like... Like I, I was just like when Chris sent. Uh, I don't. I was it you or Chris who sent the video today? We're talking about the trailer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who sent it today? Uh, if, was it, I think it was wh- which one was it? Okay, Chris. When I, hey. I was like, because okay, um, back in the day in the early '90s, the Ninja Turtles games were fucking fantastic. After nineteen, after the one on SNES, oh my god! Oh, the stream is just so fucking gorgeous. Yeah, well, <laughs> once once we got into three D, like suddenly Ninja Turtle games just stopped being good. So the the one Turtles in Time for SNES was fucking incredible. After that, it went to shit beyond shit. Uh, so the Turtles fighting game was still fun. Like this 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 Turtles like Turtles in Time was awesome. It, it's arguably the best um, Ninja Turtles game ever. When I saw this trailer today, oh my god, was I so fucking happy. It wasn't even funny. Because it brought in, like, the... I, I love the 2D cutscenes. I really do. And then the fact that they brought in the 2D gameplay... I was just like, oh my god, this is going to be fucking... It looks like almost if the Scott Pilgrim-like style was like a Ninja Turtles game. I fucking love how yeah. it looks. Yes! And the thing is, like, this yeah. is something that, like, you can just play for fun. In fact, I think this should have been made long ago. Because it's... It, it would have been something that the pandemic could have helped... That could have helped you through the pandemic. Because it just looks like a lot of fucking fun. And it's so much nostalgia that you could have just played it and just had a lot of fun f- with it. So th- I'm so excited for this. It's not even funny. I, 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 I mean, why demanding... would it be funny? It's just fun. I get that. <laughs> I, I demand. I don't know. I think he's trying to be funny. It. I think he's trying to be funny. Like the Scott Pilgrim game was just, I was like, I was playing it like, oh my God, this is fucking old school retro co-op arcade shit yeah it That's feels like every game that like you played at the arcade or on the super nintendo back in the day where it was just like you yeah. plug in a couple of controllers you and like a couple of friends coming yeah. over and you just go ham on it you probably you probably most of you suck at it but who cares you're having fun doesn't matter you're like you're legitimately having fun it's like um for example when the old x-men arcade game came yeah. onto playstation welcome to die I mean, there was like, that. Obviously, I, there was Turtles in Time. There was the Simpsons uh, arcade game. The, the Turtles in Time yep. remake was not very good. Uh, well, that's a, uh, but we don't we don't talk about the remake. We just remember the old one. Fair enough. Um, the the uh, sorry, what was the the third one you mentioned? Uh, the Simpsons arcade game. Okay, so uh, that game was like I remember play, playing in the arcade. I was like, oh, this game's hard, but it's like. Hey, you know what? This is a lot of shit. To, this is a shit ton of fun to actually play in well, general. Of course, it was hard. They got to suck quarters out of you somehow. Exactly. Trust me. I like the um. So, for the example, the X Men arcade game. I I I I swear, one day I spent twenty dollars worth of quarters in high school on that game. I like it just my favorite part. Sorry, go ahead, dude. I was just gonna say my favorite part of that whole X Men arcade game is it was based on that X Men pilot episode and the series not even never got made <laughs> like that where wolverine was an australian guy yeah. he was like Arr, kids and it was like what the fuck like it was a horrible well, it was a fun episode of a pilot but i mean yeah, the show I, didn't I, take uh, off and eventually became the 90s thing. It, but they it, made it, an they arcade were, game based on the pilot episode they were trying to make it a spinoff of uh wolverine uh sorry spider-man is an amazing friends 
because one of them yeah. wasn't X. It was Iceman. Iceman was an X-Men and they had a spinoff episode of it. It was like, why is Wolverine Australian when he's fucking Canadian and played by like, it just made no sense. But you're, you're asking it, too many questions. That's the problem. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it was the 80s. They were just trying to make a cartoon that sold that so, made money and sold action. I am figures. definitely looking forward to the Ninja Trolls game. Uh it's it's it's, it's be a, a style that just never gets old. Like we like no, the other doesn't. games that we had, yeah, like there's still other games old. out there. Like there was the Power Rangers movie uh side scrolling beat em up that Super Nintendo had. There was um yeah. there was all the Spider Man ones like uh, Separation Anxiety and Maximum Carnage. Uh what, yeah. what oh, other yeah. ones were there that were like that? I know I'm missing like a this, few. Uh, there, there, I think there was. Oh, there was a uh, Superman. Uh, the 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 Death and Return of Superman. There was oh, a I, game I, like I, that. I don't think I. I really don't think I, I played, played a lot that of one. DC. That games was right actually now. a very good game. I think the only DC game I played until I like owned a Xbox 360 and started playing the Arkham games might have been like Batman Forever on Genesis. Oh yeah, no, and it was uh, horrible. The, uh, you poor man, you poor man. No, the uh. <laughs> No, so if you well, thankfully I didn't a... play Superman sixty four. That was the only important one that I missed. So, so it's okay. I missed the. It's okay. Oh god, no! I I am not gonna play Superman sixty four. Okay, I am not gonna fucking play it, ever. We should we so, so someday we'll be famous, Keep and running. for a Patreon thing, we're gonna make you play the entire thing in one sitting, and you're, you're on right. stream. You're gonna have to do it for charity. It's for the kids, Vish. It's for the kids. You're yeah. a fucking bastard, but I will do it. <laughs> Actually, wait, no. Uh, if I really want to get him to do it, it's for dogs. It's a dog charity. Okay, dog uh, for charity. one thing, I, I like that you're made, like, you don't know the charity. You're just saying these things. I have a two-year-old niece. <laughs> okay, so fine. It's for it kids for and kids. puppies. Okay, fine. It's for kids both. Oh, for... <laughs> kids petting puppies. Uh, That's the name yeah, of the charity. So a few other things. Um, I, I, I'm sure uh, Chris will may mention this. I watched Coming to America, the sequel. Mm-hmm. And... Continuing his um, trend of watching bad movies, apparently. No, no, it, it wasn't bad. It, it actually. I don't know, I've, I've, I've heard like I've heard that the sequel was horrible. That's why. That's why I was curious. Uh, no, no. Um, uh, compared to the OG, yes, it is horrible, yeah. but it was not as bad as people say it was. Um, it it just I felt like it was just unnecessary. It it, it didn't need to be created. It was just not necessary. And now apparently they're planning a third one. So it. Um, I mean, I'm happy to see Eddie Murphy keep really continuing to work. That makes me happy. Yeah, no, Eddie Eddie yes. Murphy, like, um, he he looks fantastic. He looks the like very similar to what he was when he was Prince Akeem in the OG. Uh, but I personally, I think this sequel is just more more than anything. It was unnecessary. It didn't need to be. I, mean, made. I think most sequels are unnecessary. I was about to say, I'm like most, like ninety percent of what the industry n- makes now in Hollywood is pretty unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was just really my biggest thing about it. Um, and then um, I haven't been gaming much this week at all. Like I, I barely turned on my PS4. I barely did anything. So gaming wise, there wasn't really much. And also. One thing I want to say is I'm really heartbroken and really upset that Kim's Convenience is not going to continue after this season. But um, at least, at least they're leaving on their terms and they're leaving at their best. So it's probably like the almost. Yeah, the they're definitely leaving on a high note. No, I get that. Um, it's it's kind of goes just, both ways, right? Because you miss a show when yeah. it's gone, but you also at least now this is one that you're not going. Oh man, if they just stopped a couple so seasons sooner, it would have been so much the, better. I will disagree with you on that point because with Kim's Convenience, there is some ongoing stories within that show, which which is like any sitcom or any show that because it's going to abruptly end at season five, I feel like a lot of storylines are not going to be completed and you're going to just be left in limbo as to like what happened. Well, so, sure, but keep in mind that like everybody was waiting for the end of How I Met Your Mother, and it didn't go very well. So just because there's un there's stuff mm. that isn't finished doesn't mean the quality is going to be the same when it's done. So it it goes both ways, right? Like you 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 hate the fact that there's some stuff you're not going to see the end of. However, at least it's leaving in like the highest of possible notes in your mind, rather than maybe having a season where it just completely falls on its face. Like uh, I don't know a certain so... uh, show that we already mentioned on this Game of Thrones. 
Yeah, I'm sure a my, lot of people were kind of hoping that they just abruptly stopped at that season before the end. My personal opinion is that because a few things are probably going to be left unresolved at, at the season's end, I think they should just do a simple made for they TV. They could do a movie, movie if they wanted to just to tie yeah. it all up. They probably uh, could. It, it probably would. It really, in my personal opinion, I think it's better than Shit's Creek. The way the show has done, the way it has depicted the Canadian culture and the, the uh, let's just say, immigrant culture of Canada, I personally think it's better than Shit's Creek. And I don't think it's gotten, it's getting a fair ending. And also, uh, like, one thing I, I, Simu Lu is going to be in Shang-Chi. So he's going to be an MCU character. He's going to be a mainstay and a, a very, well-known name eventually in the next two years oh, he's go. everyone's gonna know simu lu like they know chris evans well at least at least the show's leaving with with a lot of positivity behind it right i get that i i just think that they should do something to end the show properly because it is a fantastic show and i'm not trying to be biased i love shit's <laughs> creek but in my opinion i think it's better than shit's creek and put probably the greatest show in canadian history so those are just my my things on it um yeah that's that those are my things of this week chris what have you been up to hey quit the hosting duties you son of a bitch that's my job so uh <laughs> we're not gonna do anything with chris because fuck that i don't care anymore now that Vish decided to do we're not doing it anymore so moving on to the next thing no i'm just kidding uh, oh man yeah chris said anyway bitches. Um, so I've honestly, mine won't be very long. Well, that's not true. I ramble. Um, you say that, but we'll make it long somehow. That's yeah. what she said. Uh, so I've gone back and I've been playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla again. Um, I'm not going to be talking about that this week because uh, I'm going to talk about the other game I've been playing. I've actually only played two. Uh, the other game uh, is that I finally finished Tales of Vesperia. So I figured I'd give kind of my review for that one. It's one of my favorite tales of games i've ever played and honestly it's one of my favorite jrpgs i've ever played it's not like it's the best i didn't walk away with from this with like fucking chrono trigger or final fantasy 6 vibes or anything like that it's not the best rpg in sense of story or anything by any means um it just it was a really well done comfort food jrpg like it had all the stuff that they've been changing in GR JRPGs and like taking away certain types of gameplay or taking away types of story or just making them overly complicated for no fucking reason. Um, it was nice to have just an old school JRPG that had a modern feel to it, basically. I know this game is like 10 years old or something like that and it's the definitive edition, um, but just like... I don't know. It just felt like great to me, and especially when this game came out, they were working on Final Fantasy 13 and already like screwing around with my favorite JRPG series of all time anyways. So uh, the reason this game is comfort food first, and Adam, you'll probably love this. Every character in the game has the stereotypical fucking anime JRPG character fucking tropes, like every single one of them. So first of all, there's the boy who's young that is kind of whiny and is always looking up to like the main character and just like wants to do his best and prove himself to everybody. Okay, I gotta um, ask the important but, question if it's anime trophy. Is the main character dumb as fuck? No, he's not dumb. Okay, so no, it's not 100% anime bullshit. Not 100, but he is JRPG standard for the main character. Wait, is, the, is the second like most important character dumb as fuck? I'm trying to think if there's a dumb as fuck character. I honestly don't think that's there's a actually dumb as fuck shocking. Character. Then there's always that one person that is like as fucking like dunce cappy as possible. Like just yeah, has no. enough cannot see anything coming ahead of him. No, well, there's the one little girl who acts very kind of like spaced out and like really into her own thing. But like I think so, she's 11, so it's just an 11 year old like. So by the visuals I'm seeing in this game, is it more of an anime-based cutscene type game, or is it more extreme? CGI? Extreme anime. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, the cutscenes are hand drawn for sure, and then the game looks like an anime brought to life. Like it's as you can see. Um, but yeah, so the main character is he's the type where it's like at first he's just tough. He looks out for the underdogs, but doesn't really care anybody about the same time. But then by the end of it, he's like, never mind. Now I understand the power of both love and friendship. That's enough to get me. Okay, through. that's stu- <laughs> that's super fucking anime. Yeah, like it was like, oh my god. But oh voiced by god. Troy Baker. Uh, I, I, I'm really surprised that like a game doesn't go all out with this concept and just like, you know how the ultimate spell in a lot of games is in a lot of like Final Fantasy games is Ultima? I'm surprised there isn't like yeah. a move in in most Japanese like JRPGs that are just like friend bomb. And it's just like the yeah. ultimate attack where it's just you you it's like Goku spirit bomb but it's just spirit harnessing bomb, the just power of it. friendship and just throwing it at everything. Yeah, absolutely. The power of friendship in anime would probably create a black hole of destruction. Yeah. Um the girls in the game, extremely stereotypical. The three different types that you get in anime and JRPGs. One, the girl with the pink hair you can see. She is a princess and the overly apologetic one where it's like she's going to sacrifice herself for like the greater good, but will apologize to everyone because so how she's going to make them feel. Yeah, she's Yuna fucking 8.0. Like it's just <laughs> extreme Yuna. Um, then there's the other girl you can see on the screen who's like this very smart girl um and she's like she her she's into like machines and and so that she's kind luca of stuff. yes she's luca. i love how immediately exactly. you're just like let me just go back to my knowledge of jrpg characters and be like hmm, yeah. this seems like it was she, copy and pasted from something she also looks like luca with the way they designed her she's got yeah, the she goggles, literally has goggles on her, on her head, head. <laughs> yes and then there's the third girl which is fang from final fantasy 13 the basically naked overly tough <laughs> hot girl <laughs> and literally she has yang's spear but also this game came out before final fantasy 13 so now my fucking mind is blown because i'm like i don't know who started these stereotypes what um, console was final fantasy 13 on it would have PS3. started a ps3 360 actually what i would think it would yeah, have been okay. ps3 first wouldn't it i don't know maybe no it was 13 maybe on both right at the same year. time uh i think it was final F- maybe maybe yeah, I actually can't remember. I think it had to have been because um, I think I played 13 when it came out and I only had a 360, I think. So it must have been. Yeah. I'm trying to think. What other characters are in this game? There, Oh, there's the little girl um, who's a pirate. Um, and she's running yeah, around and all she cares about is treasure. And she's just like kind of ditzy where like she'll leave to go by herself and she'll be in the middle of a desert. And she's literally like about to be eaten by a monster, but she's too busy with her head in the sand trying to find the treasure leg sticking out. And it's like, she's going to die. Like, how does she not know what's about to happen? Um, again, the, there, there the is always boy. like one like group of bandits or pirates or mercenaries. And it's led by like what looks like a tiny child. It just it's just a yeah. thing that happens, apparently, in all fantasy worlds. Yep. She was the leader of pirates. Yeah. So she was um, white. Then Mama. there's. <laughs> yeah. Um. Then there's my favorite character, the typical old man that's with the group that's also a womanizer. And my favorite so, part okay, of all so this... So he's Roshi, all right. <laughs> yes, yes, he's Roshi, only my favorite also, part of this... It could be Uncle Iroh. I don't know I have who no is. idea who that Do is. Uh, from Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, yeah. So the show that... So you, you put a reference in when you know that the two people next to you have not seen it. Okay, good job. It's an anime reference. So, this is true. This is true. Uh, even though on this show I several am... times you have heard us both say we haven't watched it. I'm aware, <laughs> but it's still an anime reference. My favorite part for this old guy, his name's Raven in the game. He is cons- he's called old man through the whole game. The whole game, he's like, us old men can't keep up with youngsters. Or he'll be like, oh, to be young again. Oh, my back hurts. How many stairs are left? The guy's 34. In the game, he's 30 <laughs> fucking yeah. four. Chris, Chris, in all fairness, he's 34. No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes, it does, actually. Years, a- anime huh? aging is like what we, what it was in 1845, okay? Yeah, you like, only live to be about 50, okay? 50 is, a, 50 is an elder, all right? Everybody's 20 or 21, minus obviously the couple kids, and they keep talking to this guy like, man, are you going to die? And it's like... You're going to be, you got like just over 10 years. Like it's not that far off. If he was 80, I'd be like, all right, cool. You, no, you got to understand, Chris, boy. like the aging process too. It's a really old 34. Ash Ketchum is still 14, damn it. This is true. To be 34 <laughs> is actually 3,000. <laughs> 
Um, but my they favorite age character at like one, one ten millionth old. the rate we do. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> they're like elves, but the years don't count. Um, and then the last character is an animal, like Red Thirteen. Only Rapide, the dog. Uh, you can't really see him. He's a li- he's in the bottom corner for anybody watching the stream. A dog with a scar across his eye, smoking a pipe. The entire game, he has Fuck a pipe. Fuck yeah, pipe. he's a good boy. I, he showed up right at the beginning, like he's the only other character with the main character Yuri, and I was just like, "This is the fucking coolest animal I've ever seen in my fucking life." He's just oh like this God. badass big dog with a pipe. Okay, you know what? And, he's not a good oh. boy. He's a good man. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good man. Yeah. He's a good man. Um, but yeah, the game itself, again, it's just like an epic, giant anime series rolled into a 50-hour game. All the stereotypes are there. Like, the main characters fall in love a bit. You start off where it's like, oh, the wa- the first quest is the water fountain in your area is not working because somebody stole, it's called a Blastia core, but it's like magic orbs materia that make everything work. It was stolen. You have to go get it back. Final thing, literally fucking God is coming down to destroy. I was about to say, I'm like, so you start by fixing a water fountain and then you end by killing God. Yes. Everything is just so stereotypical. What is this? An anime thing or something? No, it's a Japan thing, I think. I think Japan, oh, yeah. even though they are probably some of the most like traditional religious people on the planet, they still love destroying God for some reason. Yes, this is very true. The amount of Makes shrines, sense. temples, and all the praying that they do, and yet so many games are just like, kill him. <laughs> kill him. Um, but yeah, like the game itself, uh, as games go, like gaming, I have to give this... Between an 8.5 or 9, I'm constantly going back between the two because I know if I was to rack this up against all of the epic games out there that exist, is it as good as all the other games where it's like I walked away and that was like a 9 out of 10? There was the odd thing I didn't like, but it was like the perfect game. This one doesn't hold that awesomeness where something new happened and it blew me away. In fact, Everything in this game, I'm pretty sure I played it before, especially if you played a Tales of game around the same time. Like they were changing the story, but everything else was the same. All the stereotypes were the same. You did the same shit, but there was just something. It's kind of like why I'm looking forward to Dragon Quest XI. It just feels like an old school game that's been kept like it hasn't changed. They've added a little bit, but they haven't taken away all the good things that people already love. And they and apparently it's still going because all the other Tales games are pretty much just like this. Um, I had played Tales of Zestaria like a couple years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. How many hours that, did you put into that? Uh, Zestaria, I think like 60 or 70. This okay. one I only put uh, 50. Uh, there was more side quests and stuff I could do. Op- there's an optional dungeon, but I knew the rabbit hole I would go down if I did all of the post-game stuff. Because Tales of Graces one that was on PS3, I actually got the Platinum for that game, and it took me 220 hours. And it's it's a long time to get every trophy, because you have to beat the game twice, and the second time you get all these optional dungeons, then you have to go back and like do all this extra shit. It's just like ridiculous. It's like insane. I mean, logically, Um, it wouldn't have been a bad idea, because by the time you finish all all the gameplay in this game, maybe Tales of Arise might be out. That's true. But I also have Tales of Best... Bestaria? Bursaria. Bursaria. There we go. Uh, that one I haven't played yet. And I own that one on Steam. So I, I still have another one to play before Arise anyways. Um, yeah, like the game, the graphics are beautiful, especially the d- Definitive Edition, because it's been upgraded to... I only played it on uh, Xbox at 1080p, I think. No, it's the Xbox One X version. So I don't know if it would have been 4K or not. I'm not fully sure. Um, but like the graphics have been updated in the sense of like it's just had the resolution fixed and and textures touched up a little bit just to look better on modern TVs. Um, I don't think they added really much else to it. I, maybe an optional dungeon and stuff like that, but um, like it looks beautiful. Uh, voice acting is fantastic, but I mean it's uh, still is it is it good? Like, are you what playing the game with Japanese voiceover or English voiceover? I did the English voiceover. Okay, so, it, okay, so it is still competent. 
Oh yeah, like the main character is voiced by Troy Baker, and there's a couple other voices in there I recognize, but I can't remember the names of them. Um, I googled it like a month and a half ago, and I, unfortunately, I forgot most of the other voice actors. Like the voice acting is really good, but of course, the script is still very cheesy at points. So it's kind of like great voice acting, cheesy moments, of course. Um, but yeah, like the game is just like fun to play. The story, like especially, it's it's three arcs. And it's like the first arc is like pretty like calm and it's not like, you know, oh, the world's going to end. It's just like you're kind of off doing something. Then a second thing happens and you think the game's going to end. And then it gets that much worse that there's this third arc, which is like kill God, basically. Um, <laughs> and like it just kept building my excitement. Like at first when I played in the first arc, it was a game I was playing on the side because obviously I try and beat so many games per month. As soon as I was in that second arc, I was like, fuck and i like didn't stop playing i quickly beat what other other games i needed to last month and then i actually had it where for two and a half weeks i could just play this straight and that's all i did i was just like tails 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 every day um, um sorry, until I, I was done. i don't know if you mentioned this is it more of a uh turn-based um combat system or is it a no. real time no so the tales of games since gamecube have had this like real time fighting it but it's interesting because you still have to kind of wait during your turn but you can control one character moving around and pressing like a or well it depends on what control you're using but pressing a button you'll do kind of one attack and if you're holding forward an attack you do one art or one type of attack and if you press a dodge button you'll go a little to the left but it's not like fully free and like real time like you press a button and it'll activate like a magic attack so it's it's kind of a weird like I'm used to it just because it, they haven't changed it in so long. Every Tales game I played, which this is now my fourth, um, it's been the same every single time. Like I go into the game, I'm like, I already know what to do. Like I don't even need the quick tutorial that always shows up. But it's not, it is not um, like attack, menu, item, blah, blah, blah. It's not like that, no. Okay, okay. And the fun thing is you can set the battles to just like every character is on auto and you only control one character at a time and you switch between them. You can actually set every character to auto. So there's the odd time I had to go to the bathroom and I get into a fight. And I'd be like, all right, well, auto. And I would just go to the bathroom when I came back. I'd hopefully won that fight because if I lost, I'd be pissed. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's actually kind of fun if it's like a long, if you're grinding and stuff, like I found certain points. I was listening to a podcast um, and I would put it just on auto and I would control running around. But when the battles came in, I'd be like, all right, you guys fight. I'm, I'm going to do grinding, but you guys do it. Yeah. Uh, overall, the game, like probably 8.5, I'd say for like actual get without like the nostalgia and the and thinking like, you know, comfort food wise. I would say this game was a solid 8.5 um, for any JRPG fan. Obviously, if you don't like JRPGs, this game, you're going to hate this game. Because it is very stereotypical and does not change the formula at all. But I did love it, and I'm finally done it. All right. Well, that's been the highlights of the week. So uh, I'll briefly talk about, I guess, like the one kind of like half de like decent story that's come out. So uh, another country bites the dust. Another country has outlawed loot boxes in their country. So. Germany uh, yes. is now the next yes. one on the list. Germany has officially uh, made it so that any game that's that's rated 18 or above has, you know, is is loot box worthy. So you can't have a game with loot box mechanics sold to anybody under than the age of 18. So basically, yeah. like ger the way that I read it, Germany is rated by ages. So there's like six, 12, 16, and 18. You can't buy a game that's rated 18 if you're if you're not 18. Shocking. They do ID check, you know, we we get that a lot in Canada. If you do buy a, you know, an M-rated game, they'd usually check ID. Usually, I say, you know, very loosely. Um, but yeah, like any game with loot box mechanics, such as FIFA or Madden or, you know, like, uh, I guess like Call of Duty, if they still have them. But I mean, like Star Wars Battlefront 2, when they were still having those, like any games of those examples, or I guess even Overwatch, because I think Overwatch still has them. All those games, they you cannot sell them anymore to people under the age of 18 in Germany. So... It's just another another country that's just nailing that shit down, being like, look, we got to put a stop to this shit. That's a win. That's a huge mm -hmm. win. And I keep, yeah. every time I see these stories, I'm like, okay, can somebody in this fucking country, I don't care about the states at this point, because I know the states won't do it, because literally all the industries that make the money off of these are American, so the chances of that are pretty slim. 
But I'd love for Canada to have the balls to do the same thing. I fucking love for that. I I can see Canada doing it. Um, I think it's going to take like most of Europe at this point to do it now. Yeah. Like, yeah, because I we're so close be to America, getting more it's, we're going to be like one of the last people to do it because they are our neighbors. And I really do America. feel like America will be the last ones to do it. America. Fuck yeah. And there's the mute button again. Done. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, um, it's it's just a joke that we still hear. We're still here in this day and we have to like explain to people why these shouldn't be a thing anymore. I've had I've seen so it's many so many ridiculous. threads online, whether it's on Twitter, Reddit, et cetera, et cetera, where people are still like, "Well, it's fine if it's in moderation," or you know, there are, there are reasons why you should have them in. And it's like, no, it's content that doesn't do anything to change the game. Like I've seen every every excuse in the book. Like I've seen, well, I've seen people claim to be fathers, being like, "Look." I play Madden and I don't have a lot of gaming time, so I spend the money on these things so I can get the players I want. To which I say, do you not think it's a problem that you're spending money on a game that you can't spend enough time in to unlock stuff, so you're spending more money on top of that for that game? Maybe you should just pick a better game. I just find that, like, it's pretty much, it is gambling. It, and it should not be allowed. They can make any excuse and they want that it's that it's somehow not gambling, but realistically, it's gambling. It is, it is. like you're you're pretty much playing a fifty fifty ticket. It's what's that? Why do you have to pay to 50, unlock 50 characters? Is being very generous. Most of so, no, I get that. I mean, granted, you get something at all times. It's like it's like you know those Japanese lotteries where you roll the thing and and a ball comes out, but like they're almost always the white ball, so you get a thing of Kleenex. Yeah, it's like, look, you might get something, but it's never the thing you want. Like, I play, like, say, MLB The Show, and I buy a pack. Sure, I want that Mike Trout card, or I want that um, that retro, like, Joe Carter, or, or uh, uh, like, Ted Williams, or, you know, Jackie Robinson card. But I'm more than likely going to get some fucking rookie pitcher for this t- for the Pittsburgh Pirates that I've never heard of before, who has no value at all in the game, just because that's how it works. And to me, and see, people can can make the claim that oh, because you got something, it's not actually gambling. But I mean, you can play a slot machine, put in three coins, and get one coin back. That's still a loss. Yeah. Yep. No, it's um. Like, this whole thing with loot boxes, I think it is fucking wrong. That you are literally gambling. You are literally, like, going into a draw. And I will say this. I have seen it where you will go into a casino and play digital blackjack or poker games. And the fucking machine is rigged and algorithm-wise to make you lose. And I have seen people blow like hundreds of dollars. Because that's the thing. The I can understand knows. like playing a game like roulette because you can see the fucking ball. I'm sure they found a way to jerry rig yeah. that too. But on a computer screen, you can't see shit. Sure. No, now man, they started is, making like, fine. say, like all the sports games now, they make them post what the odds are. But you don't know for a fact that that's actually what's in the no. system. They can post whatever yeah. they want, but you have no way of proving that it's true. So it is proven that casinos will have lots of lights and sounds going off. Like everyone's winning, but only 5% at best of those people are actually winning. The machines that aren't being used are making these noise like, oh, yeah. Like it's, it's like every time like a video game, is, like 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 NBA came out with a commercial showing off all the new modes they have, and you see the guy pulling a pack, and he pulls out a Kobe. What a fucking surprise! It's almost yeah. like you can make anything the way that you want it to when it's behind a fucking screen. Yeah. Exactly. So the this oh, yeah. is fucking wrong and unethical and frankly despicable that they're doing this. The problem is nothing's going to be done. Unless I mean, here in North America, yeah, probably not. Europe's no, slowly doing the their only, best, but it, it it's going to be so hard to get to get this these two countries. What, Canada, the only, the, the only way that it's going to be done is 
as a whole, we stopped doing it. And that's not going to happen. So it's always going to continue. So that's yeah. the problem. Because the you thing know, is, is uh... like, there, there's no oversight in the industry. Because the sad part is, is that all these European countries can do it. But EA is just going to sit there and be like, well, we're in the, we can basically just throw whatever money we want at any politician in the States because we're as crooked as they fucking come. So it's pretty easy to so... get away with that. Plus, there's all the say, people who are over 18 that are going to keep buying these. Yeah, there's so many. There's so many people keep... playing Madden that are totally not like taking their parents' credit cards and racking right. up massive debts on them because they're buying. In packs. all, in all fairness, Madden is phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenally good at taking money out of your wallet. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> what I think needs to be done about this situation is that, as a society, as a gamer society. You guys got to stop buying these. And until you stop buying these, that's not... And I know it's not going to happen. Because I was going to say, hot take is nothing you say is going to make them stop. It has to be something the industry has to regulate. That. That's the sad reality. Is it's gonna, The only way it's going to no, happen is if the industry I get that. does it. But I, I feel like as representatives of the fan base, we need to say, guys, stop buying it. Stop doing it. Because they don't give a shit about the fans. They well, don't. No, and I understand. But what I'm saying is, is like, it doesn't matter because we've been saying this for ten years. It doesn't matter. That's why I'm... countries are starting to outlaw them. That's why you're seeing the 18 and over stuff because they're at least trying to limit it. Because that's all they can do. Because you can't stop people, so they're trying to limit the as the much only, as they can. The so only that's thing the thing. I can say you can say a million the... times to people, "Don't buy them," and I'd love to. It's the same. I try to tell people not to pre-order, but lo and behold. So many fucking pre-orders keep happening, so it doesn't matter. I think what needs to be done is the MSRP. The ESRB. They need to step in. ESRB, sorry. And I don't to... think, no, they, I think, the I don't think they have the control of it, and not to mention they're also owned by the ESA, which are industry executives, so why would they ever do that? That's the problem, too. The ESRB and the I... ESA are done with the industry, so again... There's no way that we have con- we don't have control over it, and the industry sure shit isn't going to change it for us because they're making the ones making the money off of it. It's a shit situation. That's why the government has to be the only one to do it. That's I, I get that, and that's the only reason I'm mentioning this is because if they were to outlaw the gambling situation with loot boxes... I mean, they don't outlaw. And, they just keep it so that it can't be no, sold to miners. That's what they do. Yeah. So, for example, if they were to make... Let's just say Madden 18 plus because of gambling, you'd be fucked. They they would they would still make it. their money, and I think, but they'd be in a very difficult place to decide whether or not it's still worth keeping the loot boxes in. Because that's the one hope is that, that let's say let's say is, in the U.S. that Madden has to be an 18 plus rated game just to keep the loot boxes in there. EA is going to be in a really weird place looking at it, being like, well, we could make a shit ton of money off of dumb fucks over the age of 18 that are that are suckered into this but we also wouldn't sell nearly as many copies because of it because families wouldn't be buying it because the second the second you have to card somebody to play a football game they're asking questions yeah so it's it's it would be interesting but it's really the only route we have it's unfortunately as much and i'm anti-government the government's the only people that can help us with this that's the sad reality no that that definitely is and I don't really know why they're not stepping into this shit because because they're probably getting paid off too. <laughs> for fuck's sake, probably. And yeah, it's just plain and simple. It's just a shitty situation. It's wrong and uh it's tarnishing our our love. Eh, that that shit was tarnished away a long time ago. <laughs> I I feel like the loot boxes are doing it are destroying it a lot more. Well, yeah, but they've They're been definitely destroying, destroying sports years. games. We're lucky that like the single player like <laughs> Horizon fuck. Zero Dawn and shit like that those games are still what they are and awesome. And it seems to be that this is mostly in sports games. But I mean, it keeps us away from sports games, which I probably would play a little bit more if the stupidness of all this wasn't there. Well, it's kind of the sad reality, right? Like, I love the MLB games. Like, right now, it's my exercise game. I'll hop on the exercise bike and play, like, the offline single-player mode that where it's just you, like, trying to become a pro. And it's fun. And I played the their ultimate team mode and never spent a dime. And I still enjoyed it a lot. But it's it's for the same reasons that I can't bring myself to 
buy these things anymore because they're so copy and pasted because most of these games now are just mm. spent trying to find more ways to get more money out of you. And like, yeah, it's ridiculous. look, as much as I shit on, like I shit on Ghost of Tsushima earlier, I'd still rather buy 10 of those games than buy one sports game right now. Because even right. if the story isn't what I want it to be, at least it's doing something. It's not, it's not trying to get another $50 out of me every fucking time I put the disc in, you know? Yeah, it was trying a, a different story or a different setting or it was trying something new narrative. But at no point is the game, like nobody bought Ghost of Tsushima and thought, oh, these guys are trying to rip me off. Even Cyberpunk in its shit state, I'd still prefer over a sports game because at least Cyberpunk, I guess in massive quotations, tried to do something. <laughs> We, we've all seen so many videos now of like Madden literally copying and pasting assets. Like it's that bad. They, cause they know, they know yeah. that people don't care. And that's why, like I said to Vish, it's like, look, we can say as many times as we want, don't buy this or don't do this. It doesn't matter. The industry is just, it's, it's gotten us to this point that we're just stuck in that, in that, you know, in that divot or that, um, that trench. Where we're I'm aware not getting of that, of it. but it's like the whole situation. Like, I feel like. At least if I tr say something or try to say something, it could potentially cause a conversation as to why this is really shitty and why and there needs to be change. It's not to be pessimistic, but like I said, we've been doing this for 10 years, this conversation, I, and it hasn't changed anything. That's why I said the reality is, is we've proven at this point that it's not going to change because we say it should. I'm That's why I said the government's the only option we have, because we as gamers have tried for 10 years to get people to stop and Madden continues to break records. Call of Duty continues oh. to break records. It's so it, do it doesn't matter. We might be able to stop like three people, but it's like the Cerberus, or the Hydra, sorry. You, you cut one head off, three take its place. Hell Hydra. But anyways, can, let's, let's stop talking about uh, dumb fucking games and uh, transition into something much more fun, because like we said earlier at the start of the show, it is the 10th of March. Happy means... Mario Day, bitches! I guess, I guess I'm not going to get to do it. It's so me. Yeah, it's Mario Day. So, ironically enough, last year, the first Mar March 10th that we had on this podcast, we actually did the show. It was oddly on a Tuesday, so we did it on different days back when we weren't doing it on a strict schedule. So, I feel like we need to do uh we need to do an episode on Mario Day going forward, no matter I, what. I I guarantee you I'm going to forget. We're we're just going to do another Wednesday and be like, "Oh, it was Mario yes. Day 6 no. days ago." Mario Day is in my calendar, like my actual like personal calendar every year now. I put it in <laughs> last year and it showed up and it gave me a reminder like, hey, Mario Day is coming in two days. And I was like, holy shit, I forgot I created a holidays tab and I cr put this in as a personal holiday. So I'll remember next year because my phone will tell me. So last time we did this show on Mario Day, we obviously did the most cliche thing in the world, which was just talk about our favorite Mario games. So um, that was fun. I really love that. So I'm going to pull a fast one on you guys and give you a real challenge. So instead of talking about your favorite Mario games, I want to know favorite. what you got. What's your favorite spin-off Mario games? Ooh. Okay. So uh, non. So whatever we consider to be a normal Mario game, like the platformers, those don't count. Okay. And I can. And only I can say Mario is missing a, as you know a joke. Because I have uh, I have beaten that game several times okay, as a kid, yeah, well, and I might be the only I, person to beat it more than once. I got, I got one. I got I got I got mine. Well, it's not. It's don't get one. We're just going to talk about our favorites. But since you're the one that's got one, what's why don't we start with you? What's the first one that you came up with? Super Smash Brothers Brawl. That's not a Mario spinoff. So you're already wrong. It is. No, it's it not. is. It's a Nintendo spinoff. It's a. It's hard because of Mario. And that's Mario not what a spinoff is. is. The main character in it. <laughs> Are we are we seriously well, starting this off with a, with a debate? Okay, well, what would you consider a Mario games that have Mario, Mario Kart, <laughs> Mario Paint? Okay, uh, okay, if Mario Kart is considered a spin off, that's so is Mario's Smash in the Mario. title. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Um, also, if you if you Google top Mario spin off games, Super Smash Brothers is never on those lists. So okay, clearly, you know, the okay, entire uh, community uh, thinks I'll that. Say, uh, Mario Kart on Wii. Yeah, no, that's a pretty good one. I love the steering wheel. I, 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 that's a good one. I, so many friends of mine refused to play with that wheel, and I would kick their ass every time with that wheel. And they were like, yeah. how the fuck are you so good with that thing? I'm like, I, 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 I do it the turny just... thing. That's, I do the turn. <laughs> it, okay, um, 
Uh, so I played with the wheel initially, but then I ended up going with the uh, the pro controller, and I loved it. And I I I fell in love with Mario Kart all over again. I'm the guy that so, just likes. I'm the guy that like when he plays a video game turns his head whenever I do a turn in a, in a racing game. So the wheel oh, just no, makes sense I still for me. do that. Like, yeah. It's so much. It's playing... so much better now because now you actually have an excuse to turn your head because now dude, you have a wheel and... in your hand. Now it actually okay. looks like you're turning with it. So, dude, if I'm playing burnout, like when I'm turning, I'm like burr, burr, like. I'm going. Yeah, but you look more like motion. a psychopath when it's a controller. At least with the wheel, you're like, "Oh, I'm actually steering." <laughs> no, I get that, and I'm okay <laughs> with that. But then I just find like, um, so when I got the pro controller for the Wii and I was playing, I was like, "Hey, this is actually fucking amazing." And I, I thought, for, in my personal opinion, it was the best Mario Kart. I actually hold that one to Mario Kart Eight, which was where I was going. I think Mario Kart Eight which, basically uh, took the Wii formula and just perfected it. Is that the one on the Wii U? That's the one on the Wii U and then got re-released on Switch right now. That's the current one. And yeah. I really do think that they've perfected it to, to the utmost extent. Especially yeah. now that it has the advantage you know, of getting I, all these extra I will, courses now with DLC. I will, I will, it's uh, such a massive game. I will yeah. half agree with you. Um, I just found that like the with the difference is with the one that was put on the Wii is the the motorcycle option and the fact that you can That's actually in Mario Kart 8. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's Mario Kart 8 is just like the improved version of the Wii version. No, I get that. But I mean, with Mario Kart uh, on the Wii, when you were able to actually go off ramps and with the motorcycles and everything, do stunts and everything, and do more uh, tricks and everything, I found that was an awesome aspect of it. It's all an 8. That's why I'm confused. Like, that's literally I'm, all I'm, eight. I'm aware, but I feel like on Wii... It, this is just me. This is my personal. I know, but you're you're confusing the hell of me. You're like you're making it sound like only that game has it. <laughs> no, that was the first game to have it. Well, then say that it was the first one. <laughs> say okay, it so that was it. the. Okay, so it it introduced these different aspects of the game, where I thought that Mario Double Dash failed upon it. I found that oh, God, Mario. Yeah. Mario, I I, am I the only person that thinks Double Dash is amazing? Holy shit! I swear to God, you might be. No. Um, yeah, listen, I, like I, I, while I enjoyed it as a Mario Kart game, I thought it was quite forgettable, and I thought the Double Dash thing, the two-player racing aspect, was kind of unnecessary and bizarre. That's, I guess, uh, that's why I like it. I like people trying random shit. Fair enough. No, I yeah, I, I, I appreciate their attempt at it. Uh, but with Mario Kart Wii, I thought, hey, this is actually turning into something. They they experimented, and that's why I, I wanted to really choose Smash Brothers, but Adam decided that didn't count. I didn't decide it. The gaming <laughs> community cited you fucking I, asshole. <laughs> I do agree that that's not a Mario game because... There's like well, it's two to one, characters. Vish. You're the mi minority. I guess that's a, that's <laughs> just pretty much normal for you. I guess you know. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Being the brown guy, oh no, not a look. Minority. I'm sorry. You're just gonna have to accept the white power on this panel, man. Canadian uh, okay, white power. Wait, wait, very, very wait. That was really apologetic. fucked up. I don't think. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on unless you're saying on. that Black Panther was a Nazi, be very careful with your actions, sir. All right, hang on, hang on. By the way, for those all listening on the audio stream, he did the Wakanda Forever and then did the Nazi salute at the same time. He, he, uh, he, he crossed all sorts of weird boundaries. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Hang on one second. Okay, if you need to cut, um, I get, I gave you an option. Just now. I'm not. No, I'm not cutting this. Forget it. You, oh, okay. you made an attempt to get me to cut this. No, nope, too live. bad. <laughs> okay, okay. Just make sure. No, when Adam posts the stream on the stream, I am not changing me. shit. You're expecting me to do work as an editor? Get the fuck okay. out of here. Um, okay, so I I just thought like the uh they there was so much added on to the Mario Kart on Wii that it just revolutionized the series in general. By all means, the one on the Wii U was better, and this one on Switch is essentially the Wii U version, but with all the DLC. But in general, I thought Mario Kart on the Wii was fucking amazing. Yeah, so it's your favorite. And oh, yeah. yeah. 
Um, it, it, again, it, it would have been Smash Brothers, but I got negated on it. But so you didn't yeah, get I'm negated; with... you were just wrong. You got. You're gonna have to understand that part. <laughs> So I'll just go with because by because by that logic, Vish, Super Smash Brothers is also a Zelda spinoff and a Metroid spinoff and a Metal Gear Solid spinoff and a fucking Pokemon spinoff and a fucking Minecraft spinoff. So by your logic, that's fucking ridiculous. So okay, but wrong. There is an that it there's an argument that it's a Fire Emblem spinoff. Actually, yeah, that's a- more true. If anything, it's a Fire Emblem <laughs> spinoff. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sakes, Fire Emblem! Now we're getting into that. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I keep uh, I fucking hate the fact that I don't have a Switch because I want to play three houses that badly. God damn it. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, but yeah, Mario Kart 8 was the first one that I came up with because I have a pretty good idea what Chris is going to say, and I didn't want to take that spot. I have I have a few, but the number one that you're probably thinking... Um, I don't actually know if this is what you're thinking. Um, a Super Mario RPG. Yeah, like, of course it is. <laughs> Yeah, that is game... that is that a spinoff though? Or... Yeah, it is. It's it's again, yeah. Mario's in the title. It's definitely not a platformer because it's like a turn-based RPG. I mean, made by Square it's Enix. weird because it is a JRPG with platforming elements. That's true. You do have to jump around. You can jump in normal JRPGs. You can't jump. It's weird. There's a small ledge like this, and you just you can't fucking get there because climbing and jumping that's not a thing. It's it's um, it's like a lot of games, like adventure, like adventure games or cover shooters, where there's you know a chest high wall, but you just can't get over it. You just have to you have to go around. Just, I'm sorry, you. I know yeah, that you you're this great military, like you know, merc, like you have all this battle experience, and you're just just a fucking big hunk of meat kind of man, but you can't get over a chest. You you just don't have the agility. I'm sorry, you can't climb over shit. I'm sorry, your <laughs> your your boots are made are like the iron boots in, in Zelda. You just can't get up. They're not yeah. made for walking? No, they definitely aren't. I mean, the wow. Iron Boots are technically made for backflipping because you can still do that for some reason in Ocarina of Time, but, you know. Yeah, that, that's also true, yes. Mm. Um, yeah, no, Super Mario RPG, just, like, that's such a good fucking game. Like, the music, the characters that Square created with Nintendo for it. Um, it's one of the times where Bowser actually ends up joining your team. So instead, like, it's like, oh, is he the bad guy? No, he's not. He's going to actually he, have to team up with on the On the Wii uh, Paper Mario, he is a uh, ally as well. That's the thing that's weird. Like, I oh, keep it's... saying all the time, I want another Super Mario RPG, and everybody just goes, well, Paper Mario is a thing. I'm like, yeah, but it's not made by Square, so it's not a Super Mario RPG sequel. Yeah, like, it's not the same. I've played Paper Mario, and it's nowhere near... Paper Mario is still same. really good. Like, and it has a lot of the it's same really aspects good. that Super Mario RPG does, but it doesn't have that charm. It has a different. It has it. Sorry, it has charm, but it doesn't have the charm that the original game had. Yeah, it has yeah. its own. Charm. I don't even know if I don't even know if Square could do it now. Like it's just it's not the same. I mean, Square doesn't Square remember how to make JRPGs anymore. Apparently, if you look at Final Fantasy games, they're trying to make fucking adventure games now. Yeah, exactly. So they're trying to make a platformer. And, That's what they're in working. My towards. in my defense, I prefer adventure games over RPGs. Oh. oh yeah, you know what? Weird thing. He might actually think Final Fantasy 16 is amazing now. He might love a Final Fantasy with the way that 16 is starting to play out to be. Yeah, that's an actual distinct possibility. Yeah, Possibly. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. But yeah, um, um... and obviously with Super Mario RPG, Gino. We can't forget Gino. He's incredibly important, and he needs to come back. But Square holds the rights to him. Square Mostly released needs to be in Gino. Smash. Let you just put him in Smash. Fine, I'll take it. That's all I need. That's all I fucking need. But here's He's the real in question. Smash as a sticker. If, if the community has to make a choice, who do they put in first, him or Waluigi? Because those Personally, are two really Gino. strong camps. Personally, I want Gino because then Sorry, they can't uh, take it back. Who, who in, who's Gino? Super Mario RPG. Uh, a doll that comes to okay, life and is okay. one of the most badass characters that you'll ever get on your team. I'm gonna have he has to rocket punches. Because... Yeah. yeah, you gotta play this, man. If you've never played Super Mario RPG, the charm in it's that game... It's not a game, real gamer. Sorry. It's not a real gamer. You can, you can go play all the other Mario section. spinoffs like Super Smash Brothers, you, you, you not gamer. <laughs> okay. But yeah, Super Mario okay, RPG. He looks, like the, he looks like Link when he wears the OG mask in Majora's He honestly mask. does look like a, like, a, like a puppet Link when you, for when you play yeah. the game. Yeah. That's what I, was, that's what I see oh, when Link. I see him. 
Oh, is Super Wait. Mario RPG <gasps> a spinoff? Because Link it. appears in it. Maybe, maybe, maybe Gino's been in in Smash all this time. It's just been Link in a different uh, color setting. Damn it! Damn you, Nintendo! So thinking the of balls, all the all the loopholes. Gino's in the new Smash game, but he's a fucking sticker. He's a sticker you can earn that you can apply to your character to get like an upgraded attack or something in story mode. Yeah, like what? Because that's what the fans want. Oh no, I think there's a me costume for him too. So you he's can have right. a me, and he's wearing Gino. Like, oh, they're just they're like so close. He randomly saw one day that is now. Hey, if you're listening to videos. Turn it off. I can't don't, <laughs> don't kill the stream. God, sorry, this guy. Sorry, sorry. This guy is the, supposed to be the professional one that actually works in in, in tech fields, and here yeah. he is fucking doing this crap. <laughs> but um, the next one that comes to mind, I immediately default to the sports games at that point, and uh, Mario Golf has always been the one that I go to first. That. That's my number two. That's Mario the goes RPG, just Mario Golf. Fun. I mean, there really isn't a bad sports game, but if I really had the choice of only getting one of them, I'd probably go with golf because it's the most chill. It really yeah. is. Like It, it, it feels fits. like it's a Hot Shots Golf, but just Mario characters. I mean, which came... Well, actually, actually, that's a good question. Which came first? The chicken or Mario the Mario Golf was on, I think, 64. Oh, but Hot Shots would have been on PS1, right? Hot Shots would have been Everybody's yeah. Golf in Japan. That was in 97. So you know what? That probably Ooh. predated it. Like so Mario, Mario Golf existed Golf? on NES. There was one on NES. I can't remember what the button. Well, I don't, like I don't think it was a? like labeled as Mario Golf. Wasn't it just like a basic golf game? It was just called Golf. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> that was Hot, back Hot when... <laughs> Shots would, would precede it because Mario Golf was 99 yeah. for the N64. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, way. I don't care. Hmm. I do not care. No, but it I'm was just it. a uh, a fa- like that's like what this is what my issue is with sports games nowadays. They're not fun. They're just simulators. Where a game like Mario Golf applies the fun element and say it was Hot Shots, but it, it it kind of applies almost a real life element as well with wind and like physics of environment as well but they just make it fun instead i'm not of willing like, to say that the simulation games are not fun they're just not as fun yeah i don't know yeah. i i there's still I an enjoyment as a guy too, who like plays mlb the show and has played like nhl and nba like they're they're still fun games but it's not the same compared if you compare like MLB the show to Super Mega Baseball or, or NHL to um, NHL 3-on-3 three three or NHL Hits or NBA 2K to NBA Jam. Like, it's not the same. But, like, I could play Tiger Woods PGA, like, I think it was... What's the one that I have on Wii? I think it's 10. And I can have a blast playing that game. But I still prefer going to Mario Golf or Outlaw Golf or Hot Shots Golf before I would go to so that. It's not to say it isn't is, fun. It's to say that it's just not the high tier level of arcade. That games. is my thing is that these, the EA games and the 2K games aren't games. They're simulators. No, where they're games. Game, yeah, they're they're more games. simulators. It's like The they're... Sims is a game and that's literally Because I mean, the how many people do you think and play IRL Microsoft simulator. Flight Simulator and think it's a really fun game, but it's a, it's literally a simulator. So, okay, fair enough. You have me there. Um I just find that like I don't know. Like They're they're not they're a, not as they're like you prefer what we the call more arcade fun games. is not the same thing. Exactly. Like, they're they're not they're not like the over chaotic like you play sit down and split screen with your like friends and go nuts playing like games and laughing. Actually, that's not true. I'm sure people play Madden in in a, in a fucking dorm room, drunk off their ass and giggling like schoolgirls. <laughs> but you know, that's true. The thing I really uh, like actually about- uh, the one thing I remember during my days in residence in college when guys would actually play NBA and NFL Street more. Oh, so those games than- are fucking great too. Yeah, those, those were actually games. fun. Because like I said, I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the games themselves when it comes to Madden, NHL, NBA, and all those. The problem is is that they're so bogged down, like we said earlier with the loot box stuff, with just all these things that just take away from the time that should be spent on making the games better. Because, I mean, a lot of the games like NHL, um, uh, I can't remember which one it was, but it came with uh, NHL 3-on-3, which is this fun little arcadey thing that felt like NH- like the old NHL hits games. So, like, you can do both. The problem is is that EA thinks that there's no money in that. They'd rather just make money off of gambling. So, 
That's just how yeah. it is. There's yeah, still true. decent games. Like I could still go and buy like NHL 2021 now and have a blast with it for a little while. But it's I'm I'm still gonna sit there and be like, wow, I paid eighty dollars for a copy and paste. Well, that that was the uh, um, the that was the awesome thing about uh, fucking e, um, IGN when they were like, oh, it's a copy and paste. Let's just copy and paste the review. Yeah, but either way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mario Golf. Um, just honestly, my favorite part of a Mario Golf though was like I played the shit out of the mini golf back on the N sixty four days. I would I would actually yeah. enjoy the mini golf mini game more than I did in the uh, the actual golf. I mean, granted, yeah. I was a kid, so I think you know I couldn't go play real golf. So playing mini golf was the was my my way in. So. Yeah. Um, one thing I also really like about Mario Golf, and because all, like you said, I think Adam, you said it. The all the Mario sports games are really good. Like, there's I can't think of one off the top of my head. Maybe there's one that I'm just forgetting. But like, they're fun games to play, um, regardless, right? Like, they've got good controls. They're they're fun. They're colorful. They're all that. But one benefit that say Mario Golf has over Mario Tennis is when you play tennis or Mario Strikers or any of that, like you have a soccer field, you have a tennis court, you've got a basketball court, whatever Mario game they've made, and you're kind of stuck to that. And to make it like that Mario feel, like this tennis court exists in the Mushroom Kingdom, there'll be like some aesthetics outside and everything, but you're still stuck making a tennis court and playing the game in there with Mario characters. Whereas a golf course but, can just be whatever they want it to be because it's just golf, it's like a level. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a level, and Mar that's one reason Mario Kart's so good, because they can, like, make these courses, like, right in the middle of the fucking sky or Bowser's Castle, whatever. They can do the same with these golf courses, so they it's can a really real opportunity, make though, having, like, holes where you, you have to hit it down a pipe, like a giant pipe, and then, like, putt underground. Like, there, there's stuff like that that, man, if they could do, yeah. like, the new Mario oh, golf game that they're doing, stuff like that would be so cool, but they'll still, they won't go that deep. Like, I, I want, I want like day. you to actually have to swim platformer wise to underwater to go collect your ball when it goes into the lake. I think okay, <laughs> uh, cool. that part they may not do, but the pipes yeah, and everything, I think they actually. If could they do it, it would off. probably be more in a mini golf thing rather than the yeah, that would be a like, mini golf. golf. Yeah, I hope there's I like can, a I can imagine that as a mini mode. golf hole, like have, kind of how we play golf no, with friends, I, where there are uh, pipes that we can put the ball. So, in, so if they were to do a game like Mario Three. Where they had like the first world grass world, the second world uh, water world, and then third world desert world, or uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there could be opportunity there where it's like I mean that is pretty like much this. what Mario Golf is. There is like the standard grass world. There's the I think sometimes there's a winter world, but there is the desert world. Like usually they do that stuff. A desert world for sure. Okay, uh, yeah. that oh, yeah. I didn't know. I haven't played a lot of Mario Golf's um, because I'm not a big fan of sports games. I'd rather actually play the sport itself. But if they were to do that, I'm like, oh, this, I'm, I'm thinking right now, I'm like, this could actually be a fun Mario type golf game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm very, that's, it's oddly enough, I don't really pre-order games. There's been the odd one where I give in because I just want it and it comes out like tomorrow. Mario Golf, I don't even know why I have this feeling to just like buy it now. Like I just, I need to own it because I've, it's like the game I'm looking forward to the most that's coming out this the soonest because yeah. like horizon is i don't know when the hell it's coming out for sure but i mean um we're gonna get to our last topic here but just make to make a special note like all the sports games we've seen like strikers and and hoops and three and hockey and uh even sluggers baseball there's also all the mario parties despite how much we hate them sometimes because they it's mario Party sometimes giveth and sometimes mario party take it take it away oh yeah um there's also like s smaller side stuff. Like there's the uh, Superstar Saga games on on the handhelds. You have like Mario Pinball was a thing at one point. You have oh, all yeah. the all the puzzle games. You got your Doctor Mario's and your Yoshi Cookie and Wario Woods. Like there's all those spinoffs of the Mario franchise. So there's there's a lot of things out there. But like, I mean, let's be completely honest. If we're thinking spinoff, ninety percent of us are thinking Mario Kart is like the first one because they're so damn. Oh, good. Mario Kart is number one, a hundred percent. I, I would argue that more people who aren't gamers would play Mario Kart before they'd even play a traditional Mario. Hands yeah, down. no, that that's really it. It's like anyone you know who has never played a video game before, Smash Brothers or Mario Kart is the one that like, oh, this game is fucking fun as shit. Yeah. 
So, so in the spirit of, uh, of it being March the 10th, uh, with one more topic to go, I say, let's a go to our last topic of the day. <laughs> so like we said at the top of the show as well, uh, Monday was International Women's Day. And, and uh, I think we talked about I, it last just, time. So I, I do I will think just that- say, Cheers to all the amazing women out there. You couldn't wait for me to finish, could you? You just couldn't I do really it. I really could not. Cheers to all the amazing women out there. So I think last time we probably did the Adam, same kind of thing. Tank? We just talked about um talked about like I guess our favorite women in games. So it'd be it'd be the easiest thing to do and just do it over again. So I want to challenge you guys. Mm-hmm. I want you to tell me who you think is the coolest woman in a game that you actually haven't played yet. Just from like what haven't you've seen yet. and read about about Ooh. it. Because it's easy for enough just everybody to pull out Lara Croft or pull out like okay. any Resident uh, Evil uh, character, but if there's one okay, that you've I seen that you immediately I, go like, man, like that one. girl seems badass. I I have one. I have one. Uh, well, go ahead. Okay. So, from what I've heard, from because I never had an N64, and I've never played the game itself, I've heard the girl from Perfect Dark is fucking oh, amazing. Joanna Dark? Well, if we're talking the original game, yes. If we're talking the, the follow-up on 360, no, not at all. <laughs> okay. So that's who I've heard is awesome. I heard Perfect Dark itself is a better game than GoldenEye. I guess, I don't know, if the time period where Perfect Dark came out, she was just, it, it, it was not a good... Um, era for female game characters, but I've heard that that game itself could potentially have been what Goldeneye was had it come out earlier. So I would say it would be the girl from Perfect Dark, uh, Joanna Dark. All right, Chris, did you think of one? I've got a couple, but like you guys are going to be pissed because. Oh no, like, believe me. I'm, there's a reason I'm saving me to the end because you're not going to believe what I say, but you know, go ahead. Yeah, like w- number 1, Jill Valentine. I still haven't played Resident Evil yes. 3, the original or the remake. I've never played that one. I tried 2 back in the day and I played 2 remake, but I never touched. Oh, and I tried 4. So I never played 3. So I got Jill Valentine, especially the remake version. She's clearly a badass. Um and then there's the girl from Resident Evil 5. She like I've only seen clips through uh, games. Yeah, you're, you're talking Shiva Alamo, so, right? Yeah. Um, okay, I, I will say one thing. While she was cool, the only reason she was in the game is because of guilt and diversity. She was nothing really special. As she was the only character that was a female ethnic character that they put into a game from beginning to end. That is just I'll, my I'll make opinion. the argument and be like, well, that's not a bad thing. It's not. But I, um, Joel is a better character, though. Well, yeah, but I mean, at some point, you got to start somewhere. Obviously, we've, we've gotten yeah. better over the years when it comes to, to female characters yep. of color. So that's the upside. Sometimes you got to start with a shitty character to get the, the better ones in the door. She's not a shitty character. She just yeah. was. Well, in comparison to like other females on the roster, I don't think people look at Shiva very uh, positively in comparison to, say, a Jill or a Claire. So. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. They should definitely do more with her because I'm from everything I've seen, she seemed like extremely badass. Except when so. uh, they decided to, because uh, you know Japan is not, you know, especially back then was was not aversive to racism at all. Uh, her like special costume that they made for her in that game, that was like a tribal outfit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was a little racist. Oh, a little, yeah, little, uh, little not great. And then uh, the last one I could think of off the top of my head, again, which will mostly piss off a shawl. I've never played the original Dino Crisis, so the girl from that, I don't know her name. I was going to Google it. Ah, uh, but... Regina. Uh, I, I'm telling you, dude, if they ever remake that game, I, 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 will, I will force you to buy it. So by force him to buy it, it means you'll buy it for him. Yeah, that means you have to buy it for me. You can't force somebody. That, that, no, that's that's like that's that's a crime, fish. Adam, 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 Adam <laughs> just, just shut up. I will. No, okay. a crime. No, that's a okay. crime. Rewind. <laughs> re, re, 
There is way Chris, too much editing I have to do on wait, the show because of what okay. you've said or done. I can't do that. Right. I'm sorry. You're stuck with right. it. I, I, I don't. Re, 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 re. Chris, if you don't play this game, I will make you play it. Hey, Vish, should you Again, shut the fuck like up and deal crime. with it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Adam, do you, do you want me guys that? to blow your mind? Yes. So, not counting like spin off games that, that this character was in. Samus Aran, I've never played a Metroid game in my life. What? What the fuck? Not even like Super Metroid? No. Not even the Metroid spin-off Super Smash Brothers? No, not not even the Metroid. <laughs> <laughs> You've never played a, a Metroid game ever? Well, obviously, well, I never grew up with an NES, so I never played the original. Uh, I'd never been a big what handheld guy, so I never played those. When I had a Super Nintendo, my family was really poor and never really could afford the big ones. And for whatever reason, when we went to rent games, I seemed more interested in really weird, obscure stuff or just renting Final Fantasy 2 and 3 for the 9,000th time to try to finish it. So, yeah. so yeah. I never really got around to Metroid. I personally didn't like the idea of the pro- of the Metroid Prime game, so I never really looked into them. And then obviously Other M was a, I'm um, not fucking touching that with a 30-foot pole. So uh, I've just kind of never gotten around to it. I've obviously played okay, uh, Samus in different instances. Like, obviously, I like playing her in Smash, but, you know. Yeah. In terms of, like, only, I, if you know, I really wanted to, I could boot up Super Metroid tomorrow and play it, but, you know. That is you the could. only one I would tell you you need to play. I feel like I would have to play uh, the yeah, first one, to. though. I have to start with the roots, then. I would say no, that no. Uh, Super I've never Metroid beat the first one. It's too hard. Is I have cheat. Chris, Metroid. I'll be playing on an emulator. I'll have cheat codes. Okay, play the first one. No, um, <laughs> no just skip to the Super Metroid. Honestly, Metroid, I played it. Yeah, I I have beaten Metroid two uh, on the Game Boy. Uh, Super Metroid is one of the uh, sorry is the greatest game on the SNES. Or one of the greatest games of that generation in general. Um, I I have finished the uh, the um, the other M. It it wasn't great, but it wasn't h- horrific. It was still playable and still enjoyable. Um, Super Metroid is the only game I would tell you, yeah, bro, you need to play that because it is fucking legendary. I feel like Did I should piss me every Metroid fan off and only play Other M as my only idea into Samus. <laughs> Just for maximum but There's chaos. so much story in that one you wouldn't understand. Um, <laughs> why? So any any of our listeners, I'm calling the police right now on Adam. Don't, that that wouldn't be the sense. worst call the police have gotten so far today, probably. <laughs> <laughs> there was an Amber Alert played this today. Name Metroid games. Uh, no, Metroid so, uh, 2, Super so, Metroid. Other uh, I never finished the OG Metroid. Me neither. Uh, I have Met- I, I finished Metroid 2 on the Game Boy. Yep, I finished uh, Super Metroid on the SNES, and yep. I have finished um, the other end. Yep. Um, the I've, Metroid I've Prime t- games, uh, for me, I, as I mentioned, I'm not a first-person fan, so I didn't like the fact that they changed Metroid into a first-person view. I, it, it makes sense why they would do it. If, yeah, if there was any series you could make into a first-person game, that's probably the one that you could make it work. Yeah, yeah especially I, I, now, like now with better controls. Because I mean, I, I still like. I, it's not like I've never played a Metro game, but I've never owned one enough to really play it like with any amount of time. Like I think I've played Prime like for fifteen minutes at a buddy's house once, and it controls really weirdly. As a guy yeah, who's played so first-person shooters, so that that that's for me is. <sighs> I just think the game would have been better had it been a third person, like it had it been a Gears of War perspective. I think you could make an amazing first person Metroid now if you had the right team behind it. If you could get like, let's say if Nintendo was ever like smart enough to outsource their license to people so they could actually get more fucking games with their name on it instead of making gamers wait every three to five years for a new title. Yeah. If if it's they just, pawned uh, off if they pawned off Metroid to somebody like say Bungie who's really good at first person shooters, you could make an amazing Metroid game. So the only my only issue is is the way Samus is designed with her suit and everything, and the fact that her suit changes all the time. I think a th- third person Gears of War type or Resident Evil Four type perspective over the shoulder 
would have been a better option rather than doing a first person view. But that's because why, that's why the prime games did both because they did the third the third person for stuff like the roller the the ball and stuff. Whereas shooting mechanics yeah. are always better in first person because you get a better feel of where everything is. It, I, I personally feel it could have been done in a third person perspective the entire game. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I think Nintendo just wanted a first person game because they didn't have an FPS and they were starting to get popular. So they were like, we have to have one as well. Because they still have Metroid coming out on, well, they did on like 3DS and DS. They're having 2D platformers of that. Well, yeah, it's the same with Resident Evil where it's like they're doing both because they figure if we, we, at least if some people like the original kind of format, then there's that for them too. So that's the other example, thing. Like I said, between... if you license your fucking games out to other other people, you can decide which one you want to do, and then let somebody else take that license and make something else in a different format, so we can experiment without you putting resources into it. So uh, with the OG Smash Brother, um, between Super, uh, sorry, between Super Metroid, and between, um, what's it called? Between. Uh, Metroid Prime One. It was that that was a huge gap between games, and they were saying that they were going to make a 3D version or a 3D game of Metroid, but they never got around to it. Well, I mean, they've been saying they were going to make Metroid Prime Four for like two thousand years now, and they still haven't done it. So, <laughs> well, we that's what I mean. Like, I I I don't understand. Like, I've seen people argue against me, like, oh, but Nintendo always makes good quality, so you know it's going to be like that. And I'm like, that's fine and all, but if you're a Metroid fan or if you're a Zelda fan, like, don't you want more like a bigger fix that isn't like a five year wait every time a game comes out? Like every major Mario release, like if we're talking the platformers, it's like five years. It's ridiculous if you're a fan of those games. Wouldn't you want more? Granted, there's like with Mario, there's the spinoffs. You have the sports games, but maybe you're not into the sports stuff. So you'd rather have another Mario game over a fucking golf game. So with Metroid, for example, like the last Metroid game, to my knowledge, is either Other M or Handheld. And I couldn't even tell you when that is because that's how weird it's been. It's been a long time that since we've had like a major Metro release. So no, no, I, I, I know I that get... people might be uncomfortable with the idea, but to give another company the use of that license is really worth the effort because it's not just sure. There's the chance that like, I mean, Nintendo don't give it to EA, I guess like don't do that shit, but like (laughs) give it to an independent developer or like a smaller developer that's, you know, on their way up, like, and give them a chance to do something cool with it. Hell, like it doesn't even have to be a triple a game. Give it to an indie developer and get them to make an old school Metroid game. I mean, shit. I mean, a bunch of indie guys helped make Sonic Mania, and look how amazing that turned out to be. Can you imagine what happens if you gave, like, I don't know, the people who made Celeste or something, like, give them the Metroid license and have fun uh, with it? I, I, I yeah. get that, and I completely agree with you. The issue is... I love how he says, I completely agree, but... <laughs> no, I, I don't... It's, it's, I agree with you as a fan perspective, but... I the butt is honestly on a corporate perspective. So it's Nintendo. They, yes. I I listen. Don't get me wrong. The the I agree with you is on your. Well, side. the re- the reason that I'm like this is the shit that I hate about Nintendo fanboys is that they can't accept any change unless it's from Daddy Nintendo. To which I say you got like, mm. and I'm not directing this at you, Vish. Just so you know, people who are so heavy up having shoving their heads up nintendo's ass need to understand that like i'm not asking for nintendo to license out their games so that crappy games get made and they don't like the license anymore i'm not asking you guys to hate metroid i'm asking nintendo to give away the license to more companies so you can have more metroid so you can enjoy the series you like more but people just look at that as being like well somebody's gonna ruin it maybe but i like as a guy who really loves final fantasy or kingdom hearts or persona like I would love, and I'm and I'm probably going to see that when I get to play Persona Five Strikers, which is a completely different game, and came out instead of another Persona game. I'm happy that I'm getting more Persona over waiting another seven years for another game. So if I'm a Metroid fan who's yeah. been waiting eons for Metroid Prime Four, wouldn't it be fucking cool if some indie developer got the chance to make an old school Metroid game just to kind of tide you over? That's the kind of stuff where yeah, like I watch fans react to that stuff and go like, you guys just really are so fucking milked and brainwashed by these people. 
Because I'm not, like, I'm not imagine, asking for like anything a, you like to get ruined. I'm asking for it to be better or to give you more of a chance to love it more. And that's an honest yeah. and uh, amazing way to look at it. Because the same goes with any series. Like, if, you're, if you love a series of games that you don't get to see something for at least five years, like, maybe you get one series per console. Like, that's horrible if you love that series. Wouldn't it be amazing to have, like, three to four games on, on a generation? That'd be pretty sick. Yeah, Instead of waiting be. every fucking five years for a trailer every E3 to tell you that it's not coming yet. So what I will say on that I am really sorry, by the way, to any women out there that were, like, were listening for this for the International Women's Day stuff, and we turned it into a what the fuck Nintendo, where's Metroid Prime 4 conversation. <laughs> no, um, no, I, uh, for but one But Samus thing, is fucking I'm, cool. She's the fucking probably like the most badass woman in gaming, so. No, she is. Um, if, if anything, she is the alpha level gaming female. She's the originator, uh, almost, you could argue. In terms of gaming, no, she is because yeah. I'm only saying end, I think so, I, like she might be because I'm I'm sure there's some weird game that nope that like very no, few people have heard uh, of that are like she that. probably is the OG uh, alpha woman of gaming because when we played Metroid, we didn't know Samus was a woman until the end, and back the uh, now people are like oh what's the big deal about that and, and you know what. It is a big deal because if you didn't know Samus was a woman, you would have just thought Samus was any dude. So I looked it up. And she is she is document like most people associate her as the first like main character. There are plenty of games before Metroid that like have playable like female mains. It's just they're all like games you don't like realistically, like the, the answer in terms of games people know is Miss Pac-Man. Like, that would be, like, the first, like, no okay. one. Uh, True. And all... Uh, okay, yes. You know what? I, I can't... I'm not there, there, there are other games out there, like, so, like as I'm looking on the list here, like, there was a Barbie game in 1984, so that would pre predate that. There are games like um, Jenny of the Prairie, uh, Ninja Princess, Flash Gal. So there are games before Metroid that can make but that stake. It's just most the, people have never seen them. So it's, it's kind of that thing where so Metroid is just in people's uh, minds because that's the one everybody thinks of first, right? Exactly. It was Samus. It was Sam like Samus the is the one that made it like a thing, whereas they've existed before. So she's not the yeah. first, but she's the first like one that people noticed. So it was like with Samus, it was the whole thing. It's like, oh, this game's awesome. Then it was like, oh, wait a second. I I I, I was a girl the entire time. So because I think that's part of why people like, remember it too, because it came out of left field to them. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like the problem is, back then, it was a big deal. Like, if we, if we were to be told right now, if we had a game where we played as Samus, and it's like, oh, it's a woman. It's like, oh, cool. She, it, it, it's whatever. Well, that doesn't make it a problem from back in the day, because, I mean, it's, it, who cares? It's the past. Like, all that matters is today. Like, look at the graphic that I have up on the stream right now of, like, all these female characters, and that's just PlayStation. So like yeah. the evolution has uh, been insane, and without and without Aloy, Samus being I, a problem back in '86, we never would have had all this. So it's it's kind of like yeah. I guess it's like a happy problem because we we overcame it. Exactly. So I see Aloy. I see Laura Croft. Um, who else is there? Like there, no, like not... I'm, I'm assuming Ellie's in there. The girl from Gravity Rush. There's uh, Kara from Detroit Become Human. Uh, I think that's Aveline from Assassin's Creed in there. There's the Tearaway character. I forget oh. her name. There's uh, what's the what a Freya from God of War. So there, there's a there's a decent number of okay. characters, and that's and that's like just Sony's major properties. But so like nowadays, are, there is an infinite number of female like no, massively it, amazing it characters has, you can go after it, now. It, it, it definitely is the parody and the diversity is definitely get improving. It really and now is. With, now with women being where they are now, we just hope that that keeps going up for trans people and non-binary no, people I, so that I, it just I, gets I, even I, better for the community so that we have even more people. Exactly. Like, that's that's I, the big I, thing. I we, think, we, we're um, at a point now that women are at least, like, it, it can always get better, but we're at least at a point now that it's not a fucking black mark, which is which is a major fucking difference than what it used like, to be. Uh, like, for example, it's... Uh, I think there's some things that, that that don't need to be changed. I think there are some characters that don't need to be 
changed in any way because they have been around for so long and they've been established for so long, in my personal opinion. Um, I just think I, I, I am all about diversity, clearly, as the, I will say, as the brown guy in the show. I'm all about diversity. I mean, more I, white guys are in for diversity, so I don't think skin color has much to do with it, but you are the token one on the show, trust so I'll me, give you that. Trust me, I, I have heard a lot of people complaining about MJ in the MCU is a black girl. And I yeah, have and I listen one, to those people. <laughs> yeah, Fuck and that. I have one yeah, guy. I, I know one guy who has said, "So what's next? Spider Man's a transsexual." Doc I'd be like, Doc I mean, if, they, if that's what they want to do, they can do it. Just don't make Peter Parker trans. Just just make an, a third Spider Man. I, 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 I don't even think he's. I, I don't think it would be even third Spider Man. I'm sure there's more than just Miles no, and, and Peter. I'm just forgetting. So it's like the whole thing. It's like uh, unfortunately, I hear a lot of things that like people like again i i'm gonna go back a little bit in time well let's try to wrap this up as soon as we can because we're almost hitting two hours let's not spend like a massive tangent on real world issues i I will i will talk about this after the show i will i won't get into it because i mean honestly the gist of it is we see it everywhere like it doesn't have to be like personal stories you can literally go through a reddit thread on a game subreddit and find like a million bad like downvoted comments of people being like who cares it's a fucking female like it that exists no matter where you go. It's inescapable. Yeah. The problem, or not and, the problem is, and, the, the upside the, to everything is is that most of these people now are a fucking vocal minority and don't mean shit because clearly, look at what we see now. Cyberpunk just literally put trans representation in the character customizer. Hogwarts Legacy is going to do the same thing. Tell me why exists now where we actually have a trans lead. So we're making that progress regardless of whether or not they want to join us on that journey. So who cares about them? So the same goes yeah. for women as we stand a few days removed from International Women's Day, where the reality is, is that women are gamers just as much as men are gamers, just as like trans and non-binary gamers are just as much gamers as yes. men gamers are. So the reality is, is that anybody who thinks that, you know, just based on the character's gender, that that suddenly has a bearing on a video game. I've seen people with Hogwarts Legacy now being like, oh, this game's going to suck now because you can choose to be trans in a game. The same goes for any game out there. It doesn't matter what the character's gender is, what the character's race is, what they like. If the character is written well, the character is written well. If the story is written well, it doesn't matter who the character is on that screen. The only way that it does matter is if you're a bigot. So if it matters to you, you're a fucking bigot. That's as simple as it gets. So as a guy who used to be in those circles and has gotten out of those circles and seen the worst of it, and now literally looks at Horizon Zero Dawn as one of my favorite games of all time. Aloy, quite possibly, actually, no, I don't even say quite possibly. Aloy is my favorite female character in gaming right now. And yeah, you didn't mention her. Because I, I wanted to mention one in a game that I hadn't like, played. That was, that was the thing. <laughs> yeah. Motherfucker can't listen. So just in, in reality, like... I don't understand this whole thing that people have when it comes... Like, it really is a political game. It's not meant... They don't actually care about the game that they're playing. It's just meant to be that they want to be able to stay bigoted and not have to get in trouble for it. And, you know, as somebody who has gone through a long journey of playing competitive league... I used to play competitive Counter-Strike back in the day. I played competitive Day of Defeat. And I used to game with girls who I knew were women but would never be on voice chat. Even in competitive games, they would rather be in text because they didn't want to deal with the bullshit of guys hitting on them constantly. Because that was a thing that happened. And still happens, for that matter. I mean, look at what's happening in all the Smash tournaments before the pandemic, where all these guys were getting outed as sexual abusers. It's clearly an issue that we still have. So even though we've made the progress, it doesn't change the fact that progress is still yet to be made, and we will continue to make, regardless of whether the few people that are still trying to pull the cart back and pull it back downhill we're still going to be able to get that over the hill and tip it over to the point that women are just as accepted in this medium and in this community as we always have been as men. Especially me and Chris being white men. We can always admit that too. So it's just going to keep going whether you you fucking assholes want it to or not. If you want to join the ride, come and join us and it's going to be a fucking sweet ass ride when it it all gets Uh, up the top of the hill. But if you don't want to, I hope a fucking boulder falls on you on on the way down. If I can say (laughs) one thing... Uh, if it's bitches be crazy, I'm kicking you off of this chat. <laughs> I will not. Say I'm that. so I'm waiting uh, for it. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna say one thing. Like, here's the thing. 
I grew up in a very wide prominent environment in a very wide prominent town in the ni- early 90s. I can tell you that the rise of females and the rise of minorities is happening. So I'm sorry that the reality is that if you're used to privilege, equality looks like oppression. Too bad. Because you know what? Equality is necessary. It's not just for the 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 gender and racial equality it's just for society in general i mean well, a lot of us all claim to be egalitarian so i mean obviously we should just want everybody to be on the same playing field as us exactly and when, when you see so many people in the gaming community for the most minute things we're not let's let's not even talk race gender or anything else like just because you don't think a game is a nine out of ten but you think it's a seven that gets you fucking ire and shit tons of like hate mail so like we as a community also need to step the fuck up and just kind of like stop taking ourselves too seriously. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah. No, really. Just yeah. the inclusion and the diversity is necessary for the world to progress. Realistically, you know the what? willingness to just be open to change. Holy shit, that'd be a start. Because all all of you got all, all of you who are traditionalists, you know what? You may be traditionalists. Your kin, your offsprings probably won't be. And what are you gonna do when they decide, you know what, I I I I don't I don't prefer my gender, or you know what? I I don't see anything wrong with mixing ethnicity. What are you gonna do? Just fucking stop them? Yeah, to all those 16-year-old bigot gamers right now that are telling women to get back in the kitchen and and saying any black guy or anybody they perceive to be a black guy when they're playing Call of Duty and calling them the N-word, I hope when you have kids that all they want to do is to dress up as a black female character even though they're men. I don't. Yeah. I, I, I hope to God they do that to you just to make your life miserable. Yeah, no, because you know what? <laughs> it's It's not the fact that it's karma. It's the fact you have to understand your fucking idiotic ignorant views are dying the the world is changing and you have to fucking understand that it's happening and it's not the 1920s it's not the 1960s and you no, fucking it's not even the 2000s yeah and you fucking proud boy worshipping motherfuckers don't mean shit anymore hey. I'll even go above that. It isn't even just Proud Boys. It's basic everyday fucking gamers that still can't get past this shit. Because we still have a lot of people in this community that think everything is made for them. And every time that a game comes out and says, this one's for the girls, they get mad. And it's not even... Some of them aren't even bigots. Some of them are just mad because it's not for them. So guys, we're just gamers in general. You know what? I won't even gender this one. Gamers, get ready because this change is going to keep coming and it's going to hit harder. Guys, seriously, we have been ostracized our entire lives. Don't do it to our own community. Just fucking let people in. Don't be the piece of shit that these fucking elitists and traditionalists are. Yeah, keep in mind that like we all grew up being the nerdy kid that got bullied. And now you're the one sitting behind a keyboard bullying other people. Think about the irony in that. Yeah. yeah. Be better than that. And honestly, grow some balls. Because I will tell you one thing. These motherfuckers who try to talk shit, they ain't going to do shit. I can not promise you that. Two days ago, it was International Women's Day. And the reality is, is that women are going to be a more prominent force in this industry as it goes forward. We are all open to that change. We are all happy for that change. And we know that when things are at its best... The industry is better, the games are better, and our experiences will be better. That is the important part. Nothing more and there nothing less. And if you're not down for that, then there's you can find yourself a different hobby because that's and where this train's a going. Listen, I will tell you this. This is an my, amazing train uh, to be on. I, I, I'm just going to say one last thing. If it's depressing, my, I'm going to stop you. No, it won't be. From my own experience, honestly... Don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't be afraid 
to stand up for yourself. Don't be afraid to stand up for your community. Because you know what? Most of these motherfuckers who talk down to it, who talk shit about it, have nothing going on for them. So you know what? Talk, uh, like, fucking question them. Like, if they're going to make fun of you, be like, oh, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about this? You know what? You're going to see the most motherfuckers crash and burn because they don't know what to say. So you know what? If you're Stand talking in person, person, yes, but I'd also say be careful with what you do in person. No. You might, you might get the crazy guy with a knife. I get that, but you know what? Stand up to them in person because if they can't answer shit, everyone's going to be watching. I will, say, everyone, I, will, I will say this. Stand up when you feel that it's safe because that's the part you got to be careful of. <laughs> be brave. Be true. Be strong. Because you know what? Most of these guys are fucking pussies. Most of these people are fucking cowards. And if you show the world what kind of cowards they are, they're just going to get exploited and they're going to be like, ah. I'm not going to spend the, the rest one. of the show talking about how weak people are because that doesn't help the situation really in the end. The most important thing is emboldening people. So who okay. cares about what, the, what these people say? It only the, the only thing that matters is that you stick to your guns, you stick to what you know is the right course of action. And they'll do the same thing, even though it's the wrong way. But stick to your path, keep pushing, play the things that you love. If you love games, who cares what somebody else says about it? Play the things you love, because if it makes you feel good, it makes you feel good, and nobody should ever stop you with that. And when it comes Don't. to representation in this industry, it's only going to get better as it goes. Regardless yeah. of what people say, it's only going to get better, and it's only going to get more prominent, and it's going to make some amazing experiences that we don't even know are going to exist yet. So yeah. this entire podcast obviously supports that shit. And the next year is going to be the same damn thing. And hopefully by the time we hit, you know, the uh, international women's day in 2022, we're going to be looking at games that have come out in the last 12 months and been like, man, what a cool fucking crop of games we got in the last 12 months for women. Guys, be strong, be brave, stand up for yourselves. Don't take shit. So that being said, thank you so much for watching this episode of the VCR podcast. So if you are watching this on YouTube, obviously like the video, subscribe to the channel. We do a Twitch stream of the show every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, otherwise, if you're listening on audio services such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, etc., if you have the ability to rate us, please give us that five-star rating, that sweet, sweet five-star rating. And then obviously, <laughs> wherever you are, however you're getting this, this podcast, share with all your friends and tell them to, uh, to make fun of us as much as you probably want to as well. So, and, thank uh, you so guys, much, guys. If you want, join the Discord. Talk to us. Like, if, if something's bothering you, just talk to us. We'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll help you without judgment. No, I'll judge. I always judge. Okay, uh, 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 anyone besides Adam will help you without judgment. We'll help you, man. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, thank you so much, guys, for checking us out. And uh, we'll see you on episode, I believe it's going to be 67. So it's going to be the, uh, the last Maple Leaf Sandwich. we got two episode. more left. <laughs> so there's going to be some depression in there. But yeah, uh, hopefully there's some news stories next week because Lord knows this week was f fucking dry. So we'll pray for everybody and we will see you next time, guys. Take it easy. Cheers.